Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Alternative Cycling Network, where we give you hot takes on a uh, unfil oh geez unfiltered <laughs> unsponsored hot takes on a uh, bike industry news. And I was just telling the guys here that I just woke up from a nap right before, so apologies if I'm a little bit off. But once again, I'm joined by Eric from Locked In and also Michael from Locked In. <laughs> hey, joint accounts, baby, <laughs> collaborations. But I'm actually from Locked In Two Ends. Two ends. Two ends. Ah, it's oh, okay. it's the Lock oh, In that's, Hotel. Yeah. It's my second <laughs> channel. Yes. New, new venture. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Today, no <laughs> so today's topic <laughs> is going to be 650B versus 700C. I know we've talked about this, but we're going to do one more episode devoted to it because it was actually the first time that Eric has ridden 650B just this past week, right? Yep. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. On drop. So now, now that all of us have experienced the magic that is 650B, we can have a very uh, educated discussion about it. Uh, and speaking of which, let's do channel updates. Eric, uh, do you want to go and uh, fill people in on, on what happened on your channel this week? Uh, did you freeze? I, <laughs> oh, almost. No, no, I didn't freeze. Uh, I guess I did, uh, I did a video riding 650B wheels for the first time. There's probably something in between there as well. And I also introduced that bike. I meant to upload more this week, but it was an interesting week uh, with like, you know, work and personal stuff. So um, yeah, didn't get to upload nearly as much. As a matter of fact, I didn't even do a Tinker Tuesday. So I, I can definitely oh. remember what I didn't do for Tinker Tuesday. Someone messaged me on Patreon to ask me if I was okay because I didn't do <laughs> a Tinker Tuesday. And I was like, oh man. Uh, I am okay. That's Amazing. how you know they Here. care. That's how you know they care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I am alive. Um, just, uh, just you know, didn't didn't really get a chance. Did, couldn't get around to it. So here we are. Yeah. Cool. Well, Mike, uh, Mike what happened on Michael? Locked In? Michael, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Uh, no, this. Yes. Uh, this week I've went full full time. Uh, so I uploaded, and I'm going to even have product placement. So I uploaded a video on Tuesday of my unboxing and first impressions of the Carbon uh, Ridefar Aero Bar. Uh, so this I did because this is like a really weird TT thing. For it is very weird looking. Around. And no, and and I've never ridden a TT like bike or setup or whatever. So this was very new to me. So I uploaded that video to get everybody's feedback for my full review that I'm going to work on because this is very strange. Then uh, today I uploaded my review of the uh, Dynaplug Air. So this is basically like a CO2 and Dynaplug like tubeless tire inflator and plug all in one. Uh, so that was really cool. And then tomorrow I even have a video. Oh, wow. Uh, which Damn. Is, uh, I, yeah, I know. Time. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm, I, I, I'm jobless and I'm, I'm working more working hours more. than I was before. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, and getting paid way less. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, welcome to YouTube. Uh, guys. <laughs> I know this is the, the, the wonderful life that everybody wants. Uh, the tomorrow's dream. video. If, uh, since you're watching all this live, uh, tomorrow's video is my, is there such thing as a gravel specific bottle? And I think I found one. Uh, that I've been actually using for a really long time, but it, it fits the bill. So that's going to be out tomorrow. Cool. I like that your uh, your Dyna plug is uh, purple. Nice color. Oh, well, yeah, oh, obviously, yeah. <laughs> of course. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Have you seen my bike? Yeah, for, for you, it's yeah. not surprising <laughs> that it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, Russ, just side note, the chat is uh, up to date this week. So Okay, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, we had a little issue with uh, the chat comments coming in. It was about like a 10-minute delay. So after we yeah. ended the live stream officially, there were still chats coming in. But we see you guys. We acknowledge your presence. Uh, let us know where you're where you're watching from uh, tonight. Um Let's see, on Path Less Pedal, what did we do? Uh, took the Rivendell mountain biking, uh, some video in between, and then we went. <laughs> uh, Laura and I rode mountain bikes. We went up to this uh, awesome place called Whitefish Bike Retreat, stayed in uh, their, their, their new cabin. It used to be staff housing that they converted to 
lodging because of COVID. And we did the mountain biking and it was very, very tiring, but we didn't die. The, so the mountain biking. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's only one in Missoula. If you didn't know, there's the one mountain biking. Yeah. <laughs> right. the, That's the how you know we're proud when we, when we when we do the mountain biking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, that's the channel updates. Be sure that to you're subscribed to everyone, watch everyone's channel, and let's move on to uh, reader bikes. This first one is from Jazz Hands Puddin' Pop. And it's a uh, Trek Roscoe. <laughs> so I believe name. originally a, a mountain bike that's been uh, that's been that's been transformed. <laughs> yeah, it is one hundred percent used to be a mountain bike. <laughs> a million percent it was. Um, uh, I, I don't like suspension corrected forks. Um, right. Like I don't like like rigid or like uh, hardtail mountain bikes with suspension corrected forks. Um, because I think they look too much like a really long road bike, but I understand why people do it. Um, and then further to that, I don't love uh, drop bars on them either. And I feel like I'm just like giving this bike a hard time because of my own like, <laughs> I like racy, bike. fast racy bikes, but um, yeah. I think it's an interesting build, you know, it's kind of a, a the you know the brook saddle on the on what I'm assuming is a carbon frame is is an interesting mishmash, um, you know like I didn't think I would ever like handlebars like this but I do like when I was riding the Richie Outback they had cut this year uh, a little too short and I was wishing for something like this some kind of drop bar with just a little bit of uh, rise to to bring up the position. What do you mean but, uh, too short? <laughs> <laughs> you mean Russ? You don't ride slammed all the don't. time? Don't understand. Nope. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Next bike. This is actually uh, this is from Sean Thistle, and he writes it's his Poseidon X. Did it ever come in this color scheme, or is this a custom? No, this no, that is painted. That is painted, he, yeah. and it looks. Maybe sick. he watched my videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so six Ooh, it's two by. Yeah, four uh, by four by by forty seven. Claris eight speed shifters to Dior nine speed derailleur with eleven to forty eight speed cassette so lots of things going on <laughs> so he still has the claris shifters on and yeah, a, yeah. as we said and, and a nine speed dior, dior. yeah that works I mean, together it, it has the well, same capable just, right eight, yeah it's eight, probably nine. just a dior derailleur but with a nine speed i didn't know they made an 1140 nine speed cassette That's or it's good. at eight, 11 to 40 eight speed still oh, so. and, and, and he's using oh, the dior. Man, even more rare oh I didn't That's know smart. that worked together. The Claris shifters are, are not a bad looking or working piece of kit. And the whole no. thing I was trying to do with my Poseidon before I swapped it to this, you know, overpriced mm -hmm. Altegra, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, that YouTube was money this, build? I, yeah, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't know. I had no idea. That's that's my, that is my, Shimano's compatibility is is the bane of my existence. And, it's not nearly as simple as as SRAM's, and SRAM will yeah. not sponsor my channel. It's just terrible. <laughs> Damn. Damn. You know, no, I, could, honestly, we, that's we a super smart money. drive train. Yeah, yeah, we could make some money if we just had a website that uh, where you just put in the shifter and the rear derailleur and have a button oh, that says "This is the work." <laughs> and it puts yeah, and it's like, and, and the answer <laughs> that is just, oh, that'd be so of. good. I I would <laughs> pay for our own website at that point. Come on, guys. You know what? We <laughs> should actually, you know, we know some nerds. We should. Uh, how hard could that be? Just like have a list of derailleurs, list of shifters, and, and just and you just push the button. Not. Yeah, I actually might yeah. have a link to a Sheldon Brown thing that says the cable pull ratios. But the problem is you right. need to look to see what all they are. Um, it would yeah. be fun to just be like, will it work? It and then work. just this yes really disappointing no. thing come up <laughs> yeah. and say, no. <laughs> womp, womp. It just plays like a sad trump. Yeah. 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 There used to be oh, this I already bought this derailleur. <laughs> yeah. There used to be this website when we lived in Portland and it, it was, uh, is it raining in Portland? Yes or no. And it's all, it's all good for you. Like, that's what I want. Will this shifter work with this trailer? <laughs> With a happy face or sad trombone. <laughs> yeah. Womp womp. Yeah. I can't believe this that works. Great. That's so cool. That, Honestly, yeah. that, 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 it disappoints I, I, me that I didn't do it with mine. Right? That we didn't do it. I, yeah. I was saying yeah. we went way more complex than we needed to, but this is yeah. great. This is the yeah. way to go. 
Cool. Okay. And the final bike, uh, Kyle rides bikes. This is a uh, Rivendell inspired 1983 Lotus Pegasus. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, it's got Rivendell bars, 650B, some of Weymouth with Perimoto uh, tires, micro shift, nine speed, VO pedals, uh, Sugino cranks, uh, B66 saddle, and a Schwinn saddlebag made in England. So this is back. Uh, so Schwinn, huh? Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's surprising. Thanks. Yeah. So was this bike originally 650B or was it converted uh, with like cool, cool brakes or what? I don't know. That's a good question. He didn't didn't say, but I mean, it looks I'm like assuming a, those a good Paul, like those Paul brakes would would adapt for the the difference in size. Yeah. But I, I but the yeah. beauty, you know, I, I've sort of like looked at it for the rock hopper a little bit, where I'm like, will 650B go on? And it's like, well, you only need three quarters of an inch to get there. And I'm kind of looking at at where the brakes are on each of the the cantilevers on it. I'm like, well, they're all the way at the bottom. Right. If I if I, you know, will it? And I, I'm, I'm like, I won't bring myself to measure it because I don't want to like <laughs> give myself but, the but disappointment also, like, to who, be like, like oh, it's not like, gonna work. To find 650, to find 650 rim brake rims. That's... Oh, it's doable. You just no, I know like, it's doable. Bloss, but... Velocity makes a dyad, and I, well, I yeah, mean, that's they do. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. And I was just you'd have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd yeah. be cool yeah. to go to like modern hubs on that bike anyway, but. <laughs> Like yeah. the yeah. money to spend to, to do it is like, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, sweet. Well, let's uh, go on to our next segment. This is a uh, hot industry drops uh, that happened this week. And uh, we'll start off with this one. Uh, so jorts, $89 jorts. Uh <laughs> And from a brand called Ripton and Company, and apparently uh, I read, you know, a press release type thing, and he, I guess this guy used to work over at Kitspo, and he was like, "Dude, you guys got to make jorts," and they kind of laughed him out of the building. So then that's what kind of was the impetus to start uh, Ripton and Company, and you can order them, uh, hemmed or or kind of ratty, and okay. yeah, cut to length, yeah. Yeah, we're cut to length. <laughs> we were talking earlier that they should, maybe on the inside uh, there should be like little line markers, different lines, lines to yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how 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 jort do you want to get? Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, Looking ahead at booty out, there. cut here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the the booty cleavage line. That's where it's re- yeah. it's right at the top, right at the yeah, right. Like, right at the, I think that would actually be cool in. if yeah. they printed that in there and it was just I don't know what the like some kind of metric like yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there you go ripped the, in the, uh, would you the 20 bucks is 20 bucks lines right <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know would you like we last time Jor- jorts came up it was because i think hand up had yeah. jorts and but they was, were like theirs were 45 yeah it was like 40, 40 45 bucks and that was yeah i'm we all said we want them mm-hmm. right for that I, I, I don't <laughs> but right right but i mean like this this at 90 i i mean i read a little bit of it but i'd have to be really sold on like the cost increase <laughs> between the right, two yeah. because this just screams like i mean i don't know if this store is still open in, in anymore with covid and everything going on but like i could just go to like hot topic and get their like 30 dollar pair of, like like 90 percent spandex jeans <laughs> and just, like, them. like that's what yeah. i picture uh but i mean maybe like there are cycling like the chrome shorts that uh, Russ that you have, I just got a pair. I'm like, I, I love them. There's some mm-hmm. things that are great with a cycling short, but these, like, it's 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 a harder not, sell. Not enough value. Like, not enough value, maybe. Yeah, like yeah, there, okay. there, there's no extra pockets. There's nothing. It's just like it's just I don't know. I have no idea. Again, yeah. it's the it's the hot topic like old new old stock. They just like they slice <laughs> and they just pull them. I, don't, I have no idea. I don't, I'm not sure exactly, but. Yeah, I kind of you. I, you have to search for a picture of the rear, and I was hoping like it would right. have at least like a zippered rear pocket, but it doesn't. I mean, it's just they're just or, or at least ta- taller rear like waist section, so it covers more <laughs> right. or something. So, like you know, they're, like they're or just like jorts. reinforced <laughs> reinforced inseam, if you will, for added wear life. You know, like yeah. I've right. worn through plenty of jeans back in the day. You know, like from saddle, like you get the two saddle wear marks. Yeah, that, yep. that happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, still get that. So. I don't know. Let, let me yeah, know. I wouldn't buy these. 
No, yeah, you wouldn't buy this. No. Uh, how about you guys in the the comment section? Would you buy eighty dollar jorts or too much? Ninety dollar like, buy- jorts. Ninety dollar jorts. I, I'd buy them yeah. at forty. Like that's kind of you know the extent yeah. of I have like funny money, but like beyond that, it's, it gets kind of serious. So <laughs> <It gets> kind <laughs> of serious. you're like, I kind of need new bike parts. I don't know that I can right. spend it on jorts. <laughs> yeah. Um, next one is uh, a little segue here. Different wheel size, 26, 26 inch. Uh, Ain't dead. Brand new tires. Ain't dead. Brand new. Yeah. Yep. 26 by 2.22. And this is by Simworks. And they also offer these in 650B as well as 700. So if you like that, 2.22. Um, yeah, those aren't in stock yet. Only the 26s are. Just uh, yeah. for reference. But no, I mean, amazing. They The... Simwork stuff is always super cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that they're coming out with new and a bigger size in it in a 26. Uh Eric, you need to get on that. So <laughs> do you think yeah. do you think 26 will would ever make a comeback in any kind of meaningful way, or is it just gonna be the realm of a bike? Nerds? I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be the vintage resurgence. Like the vintage the vintage uh the uh resurrected bikes. Oh, that's the other video I made. There you go. Um, <laughs> oh, your your old shovel. Uh, there it is. We're all uh, we're only yes. sixteen minutes in. And yeah, all right. There it is. There it <laughs> that's is. what it was. All right, uh, Russ, give him the full screen. Give him the full screen, Russ. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go back to channel updates because yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> how to resurrect your twenty-six inch vintage retro mountain bike. Didn't do it as yeah. well as I was hoping. Um, <laughs> I'll buy these, but I'm I'm I. Uh, I want to see colored tread. I, I'm so into colored tread right now. That <laughs> I want, I, I want colored tread. It's just the way it is. The other sim. What are the other sim works? Twenty six inch tires. They're like the, you know the. They have yeah. They have that baby blue, and a, there's yeah, a couple other ones that they have. Yeah, on their I want. I, I would want that. I like the size of these. The two point two is cool. Um, yep. Like these, when they come out six fifty B, I'd probably buy a set of these to uh, cool. put the, on the new nice. one. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's what I want. That on the Poseidon wouldn't look bad. That would look pretty good with the white tape, white seat, like with the baby blue tires. No, I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> I can get on board with that. As long as it comes in, in the proper tire size. Yeah. <laughs> you can get those in 650B, right? I don't know. Yeah, Might be yeah. a little nicer on the road. Yeah. All right. And the last kind of new release I think we'll talk about is the Ridley... Kanzo fast, you know they had to put fast in the the bike name, otherwise. Well, obviously, you know, well, no fast arrow. You don't fast arrow. Oh, both. Okay. Yeah. Can't and uh, the big news about this, we talked about this last week, is that it is going to be coming with the classified. That's the name of the brand. One by twenty two drivetrain. So it's basically a, a one by with a uh, planetary gear hub in the rear that you shift electronically, giving you twenty two. So it's basically a two by eleven, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. ba- basically, all happening in the rear with just, um, with just a big through axle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love uh, I love the idea. Super hate the name. Don't know why. Yeah, but I'm just like, man, one by twenty two can seriously. Uh, we don't really swear on this channel, but you know, you know where I'd go with that. <laughs> Well, when I saw one by twenty two, I was imagining like some massive cassette, like basically yeah, exactly. like, yeah. rear wheel is like a giant cassette, and and your and your one millimeter width chain, you know, just like right, <laughs> yeah, it's thing. literally it's just a string. <laughs> yeah, it's a shoestring and uh, yeah. some planetary gears. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I mean, do you think this will ever take off, or yeah. is it just technology uh, for I, technology's sake? Yes. I, I think it'll, I think it, I mean, it could be both, but I, I honestly see the value in it. I mean, if you look at like the pinion gear setups so that, uh, like, uh, you're running for guys who are doing belt drive because mm-hmm. they don't want the, the mess or whatever, but they want the range and they want the simplicity and the ease of use. I think this for somebody who's wants the clutch rear derailleur, that's very aggressive for, you know, gravel or whatever but they want that single bike or the N minus one setup and having Mm -hmm. that spread of gears. I've been running and I kind of, I'm working on a video that's coming out next week for like my road mode on my uh, gravel bike. 
putting like a smaller cassette range, bigger front ring and smaller like road wheels and tires. It's mm -hmm. fine to be honest for most situations, but there are situations where it kind of is not great. That video is mm -hmm. going to be coming later because I've been like riding it a lot in that this way to where I could see this being a value add for again, that N minus one customer. Um, but you know, it's a technology price because this, they didn't really word it super well in this article, in my opinion, it's only going to be for like basically one spec because it has to be DI two. Okay. Uh, to, to control the rear, uh, hub. So you can only mm -hmm. get it in a DI two compatible set up. Um, they didn't say how it's going to shift because obviously DI two give your up and down shifts on both sides. So if you get through it, are you going to drop into the next planetary gear or ring per se? Right. How they, so they haven't explained all that for me as like the super nerd um, on how it's actually going to function yet. But again, right. it you have to be at a DI2 level and knowing how SRAM ETAP is with compatibility with like Garmin, which is non-existent. I'm assuming this is going to be a Shimano only compatible rear wheel. Mm -hmm. I think I think they'd figure out a like a a blip button type sure. thing. Yeah, it, at some yeah. Point. They just have. I mean, they haven't with Garmin yet or anything in the years that ETAP's been out, you know, or something. But essentially, yeah, it'd have to be something like that. Or again, on ETAP, the the nice thing would be if you tap both, even in a one by system, you still have both paddles. That would mm -hmm. technically switch your planetary gear. That makes more sense to me than than doing the the double paddles up and down the range. Um, but you know, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Always curious about new tech. Um, I don't know. I feel like if, you know, you have, if you have the coin to get the spike, um, I don't know that you'd be a uh, N, N minus one person, <laughs> sure. you know, yeah, probably, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here cool you guys go. I don't yeah, think really it's going to, yeah. <laughs> Really, Kanzo fast. Uh, if Arrow, I see this as a, if I see this as a trend, like putting fast on the end of every bike name, I'm gonna I'm gonna change uh, channels, channel topics completely. <laughs> so yeah, on we're the gonna have to, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So uh, enough yeah, of that. Fast, fast pedals. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So if you're in the chat, let us know where you're watching from. And uh, if you haven't already, give uh, the give it a thumbs up if you're digging the content so far. It helps the video spread far and wide. And so let's move on to our topic for today. So Eric, can you describe poetically your what, what it was like to ride 650B for the first time ever as an adult man? <laughs> on droppers. Uh <laughs> <laughs> slow on road <laughs> capable on single track comfy on fire road that's yeah. poetic right it's like yeah, a haiku it's a, i guess of, of like haiku, sorts. haiku wish yeah I, I, yeah it's certainly not the right form um like slow on the road but it and I mentioned it in that video, like those are some pretty aggressive, like very blocky, chunky, big 650B tires that I probably had at like, uh, I'm going to go anywhere from 20 to like 25 PSI. And like, I seriously, as I was riding, I was like out, out to the trail that I was going to ride completely unfazed. I was like, this is fine. I'm okay with... Like the sound, you can tell it's slow, totally fine. Um, and then riding mountain bikes, I was like, or riding mountain bikes, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this is this is pretty good. Like, I, I've made a lot of mistakes, haven't uh, haven't gotten a flat, haven't hit rim, pretty cool. Um, and then I was tired, and I had to get home, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, these are like these are killing me right now. And like I, you, you can always feel that way on a ride, but like it, it certainly felt exacerbated by the fact that I could like hear the rolling resistance, and like uh, I didn't mention this in the video, but like there was this a guy who like you know turned the corner in front of me, and I am 
like I'm racer boy. Uh, you know, <laughs> someone rides in front of me on a servolo with like a loose t-shirt who looks like a new rider. Like I'm a straight up douchebag and I'm like, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go around this Damn. guy and just like show, show him who's boss. And I couldn't like, it was like, like slowly, but surely he was like, anyway, see you later. Like a, like a billy goat up a, like a rocky side of a mountain. He was gone. And I was like, Oh my God. So so 2.35. Okay. So that's some pretty, that's some fat meats. I yeah. don't think that, you know, for... it's a lot of meat. Yeah. 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 But I don't know that I would want to go smaller. Like the, it, it would be a, a disservice to the space that the bike has to not have something so big in it. And yeah. I'm like, I wonder yeah. if like, I wonder if a nicer, like a nicer, less aggressive tread that would still hold its own on like dry single track would serve uh, like a nicer road purpose and be a better middle ground. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh what tires on the, the new state bike? Mike, is it, it's, uh, is that it is pretty... the Vittoria Barzo, which is a super aggressive, like trail tire. The Mescal okay. from, from Vittoria is their like cross country tire. That's what, like, if I was going to spec that bike, I mean, granted I have the specialized fast track, which is essentially a, a cross country tire. And I love that tire. Um, and the Mescal is very similar. Um, the Barzo is like one more step aggressive. So, and right. it's in a 2.1 on the new batch of bikes. Interesting. But I didn't test, I didn't test that tire. I, I got the first batch, uh, gravel Kings and 48. So very different tire size. Right. So that's, right. That's mm. ton compared. Yeah. So Eric, you've not tried like a, just a regular 650 B by like 47 with like a smooth tread, like the, the WTB no. ventures or anything. No. No. Okay. But I want to like, well, uh, you know, the, I, the next tire I get, you know, I don't know. It, 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 it will be something like that. I almost feel weird getting another set of gravel Kings, but I like, them. so it's like, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's the like the bummer of making content. Now. I'm like in 650 B. Yeah. Yeah. They make it 2.1 in 650 B now. I almost feel like <laughs> I want to get those sim work tires. Cause they're just 2.2s. There and you I'm go. Like, yeah. Well, Do it. Because that. None of us have them. So yeah. buy them, please. Yeah. So I'll probably get those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so no, Ryan, I, I Ryan think... here suggests the Fleecer Ridge. If you can get those, Renee are a little bit on the spending side, but those are like a, they're kind of yeah. reminiscent. But those are only se- 700 those are... by 55, right? Uh, I don't That's think what I thought. so. They only, I thought they only came in 700. I could be wrong. But Eric, you're running road, like you need to run a little bit more pressure road, like getting to the trail. Like when I ride my 650s, I have 2.2s. I run like 40 ish PSI getting to the trail. Mm-hmm. I'll drop it to, yeah, like the low, like high twenties ish, uh, for trail riding. And then depending on how much I care or how much, like how tired I am, I will like sit there and like pump while eating a sandwich to like go up a little bit in PSI and like go home. Yeah. But that's like assuming that I brought any tools with me. Well, that's true. <laughs> well yeah, there's that. There's that. Which I did not. <laughs> <laughs> So Max here makes another recommendation for another light light casing, uh, 650B, the tree in Elwoods. Uh, These are, I feel like those are pretty similar to these ones as well, like the the byways. I have the byways. Um, Those are good tires. I'm a little bummed that, I'm a little bummed that the brands that do do like a dual like wheel size, they'll pick kind of a Svelte like 700 and put like a chunky 650B. And then when people ride 650B, they're left with the impression that 650B is like super slow. Um, I think it's because uh-huh. of the, the tire size. So a 650 by 47 is the same as a 700 by 30, I believe, overall size. So mm-hmm. like with the state, a 700 by 38 is the spec for the slick. So a 2.1 overall diameter, I believe, is within a few millimeters of each other. So right. it's not going to be as drastic. But the problem is, yeah, there's not a lot of tires that come in the same like spec. Um, but yeah, it, it really depends on the tire. Like the Kenda that they spec on the, the Radwood that you have, Eric, it's very aggressive. Same thing with the state for me, it's cross country tire all day. Like that's my like recommended. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go 650, 
whatever your max clearance is, find a cross country tire. And that's why like, I really like my cobalt because it clear is like up to, they stayed a 2.1, but I've cleared a 2.2 with no problem. You can get a lot of cross country, cool tires in that size when you're only restricted to like a 48, like you are basically like can only run, you know, what WTB is offering and a few other, like the Terra Vels, um, and a few other brands that have some in that size, but to run, if you want something kind of chunky for single track, like, or something more aggressive, the cross country tires are going to do you pretty well. Cause that's kind of like the maximum, in my opinion, for my bike handling and skill level that I'm going to want to run on a gravel bike anyway. Yeah. So someone here has a question about Gravel Kings. I'm going to open it up to to mm -hmm. to all of us. Have you, Eric? Have you ridden Gravel Kings? I know Mike. You you have. Mm -hmm. What do you think of them? Slick and slick and the SKs. Yeah. Do you like them? I do. I I think they don't. They. I think I haven't ridden the SSs because that's their new new tire. But uh, like the Gravel Kings compared to the Byways. The Gravel King SKs, the the knobbier ones, those grip better on the dirt than the byways do at the same pressure. Mm. The difference is cornering. If you look at a byway, it's a very slick center. It's got the chevrons and it's got a really aggressive side knob. So what that tends to do is when you corner and you're starting to lose traction and it wants to slip, the byway kind of bites and then picks up. You kind of like feel the shoulder and you like straighten which mm -hmm. is kind of weird for the first few times. <laughs> but after that, like you get used to it, you can rely on it. The Gravel Kings, they, since if you look at the, the build of it, the blocks change, but the build is the same. So yeah. it's going to want to progressively slip away. And in, I've never fallen doing that, but it, just in structure and look of the tire you're going to see there's less for you to kind of rest on or like rely on in that emergency like slip angle scenario the right. sks or the sss are supposed to have basically a more aggressive center so they're going to grip better than the byways in the center and be similar rolling resistance supposedly but the shoulder knob is still the same it's still that kind of blocky and if you pull up the byway you're going to see it's got that really kind of like like t uh like triangle shaped shoulder knob that's chunky yeah um there there's so many tires that fall under uh, fall under the gravel king name now it's ridiculous yeah i know it's yeah, hard um, to keep track yeah like those <laughs> almost look different than mine but it's i'm also looking at it on my like yeah those are different than yeah 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 the the center, it's only the center right? only the center yeah. yeah yeah i've uh now that i think of it i don't know which particular gravel king it was that i've ridden it was uh i think it, the the nominal width was 50 maybe if they make one yeah so it's probably the, that's probably the the knobby sks that's, yeah, yeah. They, i don't think they make a 50 in the slick i remember looking at the sidewall and the one i had looked like it was a skin wall but it's actually rubber with just like a with, with pigment so more durable but less supple than like a true uh skin wall uh, I remember thinking that that they felt a little like heavier, uh, just a little bit more more tire than like a you know something like the WTB Horizons or Renair's tire. Uh, not to say that's bad, you know, it definitely probably has more sidewall protection. Um, yeah, and I mean it, it's funny. Like I, I actually like I'm I'm a big fan of Pan Racer. I used to always 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 recommend uh, Pacellas, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to be a fan of WTB, but like my Riddler was ripped within the first like <laughs> two weeks. And I was like, man, this tire's like brand new. It's ripped already. Um, and, and like, I remember never having issues with, with Panracer, uh, sidewalls like that. And mm -hmm. that has always kind of made me more of a fan of, of their product, uh, than I, am with WTB and I, I personally, uh, find that the, the way the bike feels under you is comparable between the two, but also I'm afraid of my WTBs now. So it's like, <laughs> there might be a little bit of, you know, yeah, no, I have my, my review of, some bias yeah, there. I have my review of the gravel King slicks that are coming up. should be up either next Tuesday or Thursday. Um, 
kind of with my conclusive thoughts of the same thing. Like there's definitely some caveats to both. The Panaraces are super light for the weight. Um, hopefully everybody, do I sound better? I, I heard, I saw some comments. I'm talking low, so, <laughs> or it sounded low. So I turned it up I'm talking closer to the mic. Oh, just missed, hit it. Uh, but yeah, no, I think, I think that's very true. I think the pan racers, if you look at like the Amazon link for like the 32s, I just reviewed like the slicks, they're all terrible. But if you look at all of them, they're all like, Oh, this is after X amount of miles that are super high. They're all running tubes. So tubeless is not going to fix any small flats. So it, it definitely depends, but they are offering like an endurance casing now. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's going to be huge for other people. And they weren't. And I've been fine with mine. I've never gotten I haven't. I mean, knock on wood, I haven't gotten a legit flat in a while. So it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, I, I, just, I just, just jinxed it. Yourself. That's, the, yeah. that's my next video. It's going to be like me finally in a flat after like four years of riding tubeless. Yeah, yeah like just, yeah. It's coming. Yeah, I do. I do think there's like an interesting uh, sub trend in these tires where uh, I think Jan Jan Hein introduced like the the concept of the supple tire. And even he's kind of backpedaled with like an endurance casing, and we see that too with like Ultra Dynamico. They have like a super yeah. you know high thread count tire, and then something a little bit more robust, um, just mm -hmm. because of the realities of how people ride, where they ride. It's not all not all yeah. the same. No, so, my, yeah, like my one buddy got those. Yeah, Renee Hurst uh, Compass whatever the, they're all different names for different sizes with the, right. the 700 by 35s mm -hmm. and they they weeped sealant and would lose massive pressure for like the first i don't know 100 miles like yeah like, just, like see, would, seasoning yeah. the edges it's like a cast iron yeah. pan you know, you yeah i know right. i know yeah, right. but it's a 300 gram tire that needs 100 grams of tire sealing to seal itself like come on like it's got to do something but yeah it was just like a mile 25 be like yeah dude these tires are light but like, you know, I'll, I'll, can we can we keep going in like twenty minutes? Like, I gotta I gotta get back up to fifty psi. Hang on, give me a second. Yeah, like, it was, yeah. It's like, tires are super light. Yeah, like bike's super light, bro. Like, let, go lift the bike up. It's great. It's super. It's way lighter than it was before. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you if you don't mind raising it up so that yeah. I don't break the valve as I exactly yes I yes pump the absolutely absolutely yeah. Like so I can't you guys ride a these... tire that nice. Like I, I would destroy yeah. it. It would be yeah. ripped. <laughs> so do you guys have any like strong opinions on whether, you know, you prefer a 700 or 650 B more? Depends what I'm riding. I still, so I still like a 700 better. I still do like a 700 or a 29 better. And is that because from a, like a, it's what you're used to or a rolling resistance standpoint or just roll over how it rolls over top terrain or yeah maybe a bit of bit of all of it um like i would argue that um if a bike could be designed nicer like to, to look nice and fill up as a drop bar bike with a uh 700 by you know 2.35 like what's on the redwood um that i would prefer that better than the 650b version because it still gives you that like fantastic flat protection and then it's like a bigger like a bigger tire and they do roll over things nicer they don't get caught in stuff um but like you know the, the 650b option is good like the 27 and a half for that tire size and while i was riding over big rocks and stuff i'm like i am i am glad to have this much tire uh, right but in my head i'm like would i be if I could have the same size tire on this bike in a larger diameter, would I be just as happy or would I be longing for the smaller wheel size? Right. And that's kind of where I'm like, you know, am I just liking the flat protection or am I liking, <laughs> am I like how much volume is too much volume? Because like if I, well, the WTBs on the X scare me still. So I like I actually ride that bike less now because I'm like, well, it's got to cut it in the front tire. I should I should replace oh, the, stone, the tires the stone on stone bike tire, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I just don't want to deal with you know the inevitable problem that it is going to have. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'd like to put some like less delicate tires on that bike and just to go ride the two like same trail one after the other, like almost bring a friend with me and be like, okay, you're going to ride this bike for a little bit and then we're going to switch. And I'd be able to be like, okay, 
Like, do I care about the difference? Did I actually even notice or was I saying it because I knew what I was on? Because the first time I rode that bike, I didn't know that it was 650B. It took me, like it took the X being in the basement over here and and the Redwood sitting here in this corner. I mean, like, like, because I just, instead of watching TV, whatever Angela's watching, I'll like look at my bikes like a nerd <laughs> she'll be like, and then she'll be like why don't you look at me like that yeah, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> because you don't they have don't 650b talk. wheels <laughs> like, that's what happened I, like, not these bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like i kept looking between the two and i was like i mean those tires are huge but it doesn't it actually looks like it's Same a little size overall. Bit tiny lower yeah like a tiny bit lower yeah. than than the yeah. x yeah. and then i was like i should read this and then i looked and i that's that's when i learned that yeah. I, I did indeed have a 650B 27 and a half bicycle in my possession. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Michael? Any, you said, you said yeah, it depends so, on what, what you're riding. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's 700 to road all day. Like that's why, again, my, my video next week is going to be like my 700 by 32 setup that I'm running is great for road. I probably run a 35, maybe even 38. Um, I think it's great for, for like road riding. Um, 700 for like cyclocross totally, but for, I'd rather for me and my bike handling skill level, which is here. And then I would rather have tire volume to make up and like we meet in the middle. So for me, it's like, I run the biggest tire I can on my current bike, um, which is a 2.2 front and rear. So I'd rather run that for me, the turn in saves me for mistakes. Like that's what I like it for mm -hmm. it's because the, the, the smaller wheel diameter, no matter what kind of tire size you're going for my line choice, if I don't make it a hundred percent perfect, I have a little bit more margin for error. Um, I've ridden the 700 by 50 C ventures, which were awesome. Like, like Eric said over for like fast rolling and like over certain bumps, but for my territory, like line choice and like cornering, especially like tight stuff. I really felt me having to like kind of like up chuck the bike and then like settle into something. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not that good to like naturally think that. So I'd rather have, again, the margin of error for the 650. Now, would I love to try like a 2.0 or 2.1 700 in like the same fast track tire in my frame set? Yes. I just don't know if those will fit. And I just don't know if I want to commit to the, X amount of dollars in the cost to buy those tires to see if they're going to rub or not. So, right. um, that's something that I can see the value in it. I just think it really depends on the terrain that you're in because a lot of the trails that are close to me are 60% to 70% mountain trails, like only. Mm -hmm. So the trails that I can ride comfortably, uh, you know, cross country tires can be great, but again, they're very technical trails. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I prefer the smaller wheel size for dirt slash gravel slash mild mountain biking, if you will. Yeah. So here's a good question. Uh, how tall are you guys? And how, how tall are, how, how tall are you, Mike? You're, you're like 5'10", 5'11". Five 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 What's your inseam? 5'11". Uh, my inseam is <laughs> short. I'm, uh, like 30 and a half, 31. Okay. How about, how about I'm you, all, Eric? I'm all torso. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the same. 5'11". Oh, really? Yeah, five eleven and like yeah. a half, like very frustratingly not six foot. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're, we're the, the we're the sh small. Uh, the what is it? I don't even remember the uh, the term for the large medium. I know it's yes. medium, medium, easy, but medium. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that's easy. But what what are we like the, the large? large. <laughs> yeah, the larges. Yeah. yeah, we're the more, more <laughs> than the larges. I, yeah, I, I mostly call it just frustratingly not six feet. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. And and I I also have a super short leg, so I I've yeah. got a, on, on like the best of days thirty and a half, like crazy yeah. short legs. And so pe think, people are always giving for, me a hard time for like the yeah. the like smaller like I'll run a medium or like a fifty four, and I, I will do a fifty six from from time to time. Most people would like to see me on a fifty six or a fifty eight, and it's mm -hmm. like I can't stand over that bike, like. Right. <laughs> like I like no, I'm it, I'm very much literally like, geometry, yeah. Yeah, has to be. Yeah. Um and yeah, then people are like, Well, your seat post is too high. And I'm like, Well, 
Yeah, I know because this bike is like <laughs> technically too small for me. I I know. No, that that's really where that's a whole nother live stream if you guys want to hear it. But yeah, it's for for me and apparently for for locked in. Uh, you, <laughs> the lock, you need, the locked in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need yeah. Compact geometry is really where it it lands. Like Specialized and Giant do it really well to where they do the really sloping top tube, so that you can have the short legs but get the size you actually need. Like a fifty six or a medium large giant or a specialized 56 like fits me out of the box as close as perfect as you can get. Uh, just because mm -hmm. extra medium, I like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's because that's what happens. Medium it's like, plus. I'm just so short legged, but I need the top tube, you know, because I'll run mm -hmm. on most bikes, one to two sizes longer stem than they've come with because of that reason. Um, mm -hmm. unless they come with compact geometry and are kind of, I can get the appropriate size. So I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I'm 5'8 on a good day. And my lift is yeah. 29 inches. And uh, I'm stuck in this medium. And I tend to just choose a smaller bike because with the thought I can make it longer. I get that comment all day long. Every time I review a bike, it's like, the bike's too small for you. It's like, because the next one would be like too big. Yeah. <laughs> huge. Yeah. yeah, like huge. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I think sight uh you know height does make a, a difference um i know for for me especially with a, a road bike you know with a 650b you can have like a, a bigger tire at the front without them having to slacken the head tube so much that you know it starts to feel like a weird weird mountain road mountain bike um so that's why i've, I've always had a bias towards 650b for 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 road style bikes just because it, it fits me better uh, but for mountain bikes, I used to be, I used to think that 650B, I'd prefer 650B, but the ge the front end geometry is so different, right? It's it's intentionally like a slacker head tube and the wheel is naturally more yes. in front of you. So in that sense, you know, I've kind of, you know, accepted that maybe 29 on, on some terrain where you don't need all the extra nimbleness, that that's, that's actually probably a better tire if, if you're going downhill primarily. Um so is it I, weird that I want like just a 29 er mountain bike? Like I want a 29 er <laughs> hardtail really bad. Like is that bad? Is that wrong? Does that make up weird. like does, does that dismiss weird. everything that I just said? <laughs> nope. Nope. I've got one. It's totally fine. Yeah. You're you're allowed. You're allowed to get one. <laughs> get two actually. There is there is one bike I'm very excited about that I really really want. But again, the YouTube full time money is this, and like any extra expense <laughs> is like that. Like way over here, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we had uh, Karina here asked the height question. She's five four, average for a woman, and on the seven hundred C bike, feels like a Chihuahua and still yes. Um, uh, so you are gonna want to find a good women specific bike. Um, I am a bike fitter as well, uh, but I used to work for a giant dealer. Giants Live brand is really really good with female like fit uh that is one thing that it's a separate brand same entity um but they don't just shrink it and pink it like every other brand or a lot of them mm -hmm. else do but for my bike fit experience like fitting i don't know three or four hundred people probably at this point um that's been the easiest as far as like women go as far as like different proportions because like most not all not trying to generalize most women are a little bit longer legged and shorter torso but at the, the shorter heights, they're more even, um, like some men are. And so live, at least in that like general aspect, they look over the kind of like general consensus based on their height ranges and then size bikes accordingly, instead of just like shrinking all the male bikes by a set amount per size. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a few other women's brands that do that. I just want a personal experience, but I would definitely look at a female specific bike brand or bike and then uh consult any local fitter um to see what they can you know offer as far as insight because it is hard when you're especially at five four you're it's a little bit easier when you're at the like the five one five foot mark it's really hard yeah she says she's on the 26 inch right now and yeah. feels feels pretty good on it um yeah it is going to be I, weird with like you said russ with the geometry and the slack head angle and all that it's hard with the 700c even in a yeah. small tire size yeah i think like in particular with road with mountain with mountain bikes it's a little bit more forgiving 
Uh, but with the road, like getting those tight angles um, is a pain. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think All City offers their smaller sizes now pretty much exclusively in 650 as well. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, if you guys are still in the chat, let us know where you're watching from. Also, if you have any other specific questions about 650B versus 700, uh, I'm still a big proponent of 650B on road, uh, especially given my height. I, there's wiggle room in mountain bikes. I think for a gravel bike, it, I feel like it splits a difference, though, because I do, like like you, Michael, appreciate like the extra volume, and uh, you know, especially if you're you're slapping you know, nice size rocks. Uh, <laughs> there, there it is. He's finally learned. Oh man. It's only taken how many episodes of this? Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it still makes sense. Like it, it's inter yeah. it, it's interesting because one of the main value propositions was uh, prior, prior to with 700 tires getting wider is that you could only get really wide tires with 650B. And now like we're seven, seeing 700 by 50, by 55, 55 so that's being yeah. kind of neutralized um but again i think if you're a short writer, writer it still still makes sense and i've done a video where i had i did a 70 i want to say it was 70 or 75 mile road ride on my byways on my poseidon x i did a vlog of it with my buddies who were both on like li way lighter weight like rim brake you know 700 by 25 road bikes i did it felt like I had to work a little harder, but like I did it. Uh, what and I, and it felt like rolling wise, like at speed felt pretty good. Um, it was just like because tire and wheel weight at, you know, steeper gradients was going to be more than what they were working with. Or even me with a 700 by a 35 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But can totally see the value, especially in the smaller frame sizes. Yeah. So someone here asked, if volumes were the same, do you think you guys could tell the difference between 650B and 700? For overall, like diameter is the main thing because volume is one thing, but diameter is very different. So let's say, I mean, let's let's assume the same width tire. Okay. So 700 yeah. by yeah. 50, 650B by 50. Um, you know, there's a lot of variables. If you slap them on the same bike, it, it would change the handling. Right now, so I think that's that's one way to differentiate. Yep, I would. Um, I don't know that I. Depending on what I was riding, so if I was riding, uh, like say say if I was doing a like a cyclocross race with a lot of like switchback, uh, or like you know, flat ground, uh, one hundred and eighty degree turns and stuff, I would notice it then. I would not notice it probably on the road immediately. Um, someone would need to bring it up. Someone would need to be like, "Hey, there's. Did you notice the wheel size?" And I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I did. That was weird." <laughs> um, and maybe on a mountain bike trail, I I would notice the difference as well. But I don't think like uh, even even the getting on that bike immediately and not having looked at it, you know, too closely to see what everything was because we're just too excited to ride it right away. Um, even then I was like, I, I didn't realize it took, it literally took looking at it to be like, Oh gosh. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Do you think you, you could tell the difference? Um, yeah. Cause I've ridden basically the same. I've ridden, like I said, the byways and the, the Senderos all in 700 by 47, which is called 48. It's all the same, uh, on the rims that I ran it on. And then I've ridden the ventures on 700 by fifties, uh, it's noticeable for me and that that split because it is a very different like height gap uh, mm -hmm. for me it's, it's same kind of thing where turn in was you had to go like more outside of the turn to turn in which you're supposed to do anyway but you had to really make it more apparent or more aggressive um your, your audio is getting a little staticky oh oh is this any better Could yeah, be it's falling good. out I, I made it this way out so no, the, the initial like for the 700 by 50 and the 700 or the 650 by 50 difference that I've ridden because I've ridden both like with WTB tires specifically with the ventures in both sizes so like even same tire like pattern I still notice a line choice difference um, yeah. roll and resistance on road the 700 C package because the overall weight between that and my 650 setup was about the same 
uh, because my 650 wheels were lighter, but obviously the 700 by 50 C tires are actually heavier than the 650s by 48s. Um, it was kind of a toss on the road, on the flats. Um, if you're mm -hmm. riding the same tire and, and similar overall weight, um, the 700s felt more sluggish. Just, I don't know if it was because of the diameter size difference, uh, getting up to speed. They did roll better downhill. And when you got them kind of moving, they, they felt like they rolled better. But mm -hmm. again, it's just, it's, for me, it was just turn in. Because for me, the Venture is going to be your mixed condition tire where you want to kind of take it on whatever. And it grips really, really well, even on like looser, crazier stuff. But I want that, again, that, that turn in response of the smaller wheel. Yeah. So uh, Stefan here says 27.5 easier to climb and 29 faster downhill. Um, I feel like this, you know, for me on, on road, let's say you have a, a same volume, same width tire. I feel like the 650B for me feels like it climbs faster. I think the 700 does feel like it descends uh, faster, um, but doesn't accelerate as quickly. Um, but other, otherwise, it's, I don't know, it's fairly close. Depends, I mean, yeah. I, it, it's kind of splitting hairs. It, like the bike, if, if, if you took the same bike and did a, a tire swap, I think, you know, like you, Mike, I'd notice a handling because it wasn't designed specifically around that specific, you know, overall diameter. But if you had two bikes that were designed around those specific, you know, tire widths and, and volumes, it would it'd feel pretty close except for some, some uh, certain circumstances. Right. So, yeah. Um, cool. Well, I think, um, do you guys have anything, any other deep thoughts on 650B versus 700C or should we take it home? I, I've got to keep riding it to, to find out. I, I, I need to ride a supple tubeless you do. tire. To I just... would totally send you, I would totally send you some compass tires if it wouldn't cost me 80 bucks. <laughs> well, and then, also, and then, also, and hundred and fifty dollars Canadian they shipping. Get ruined immediately, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like I'll open, I'll open them with a box cutter and be like, oh, they're already ruined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think the thing is, so Eric, recommendation for me is ride them at middle pressure to the trail. Mm. And, and to feel the difference because if you ride at trail pressure on the way it sucks and also you're yeah. gonna wear out the it tires really fast so eh. ride it at like what you like not max obviously but like below that but ride that to the trail for a feel difference if you're and then drop the air pressure when you get there if you're too lazy or don't want to bring a pump then for sure ride those at low psi back home whatever but at least experience the difference because that for me makes a really big difference between the two like uh, hmm. experiences essentially with the system. Right. 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 Uh, Eric, oh, Mac, uh, right. I know. Uh, quick question. What's a, what's a max tire on the Poseidon Redwood? Do you know? Gosh, I mean, <laughs> the 2.35s are. It's 2.5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I bet. Yeah. It probably it is. is. No, I talked to Lewis. I talked to Lewis. Okay. That's too bad. Meat. It's, 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 yeah. It's 2.5. It's like a plus tire oh almost. It's yeah. <laughs> so big. I know. The cool I, thing, though, is... I, I, in, in I'll never put a tire that big on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, the 2.4 Icons, like, Maxxis tires, like, in Tanwall or whatever, like, the, it would be probably, probably as big as I would go on it. Right? But, okay, Mike, your, your audio is getting funky again. I, I think I'm going to take us home here. I mean, we're, almost, <laughs> we're almost there. Hey, at least my, my video didn't drop out. Sorry for everyone who wanted to, like, drink more, but, you know, here <laughs> right. we are, so... Yeah. No, 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 no uh, lag, no, no, no lag, and no full-on lockouts. Yeah. It's, no uh, mic, no mic yep. drops. It's episode. Yeah. <laughs> no mic drops. <laughs> all right. With uh, all that said, I think I'm going to end the show here. Thanks again for watching. If you like the video, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Give it a thumbs up. And as always, keep bikes weird. Yay. How's that for a tagline? Okay. We'll see. All right. Not bad.